just a quick interlude that's not in your program, but it takes a lot of people to run an RE program. And we wanted to recognize some of our volunteers today who've helped us out. First, I have a little something for Mr. Paxton Fisher, whoops, for completing the coming of age program. Just a little token. Thank you. You're welcome. And I also would like to recognize Ellen Fisher, uh, who was his mentor during the program, which meant she attended some of the retreats with him and she helped him work on his credo and she also performed that beautiful song. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, you're welcome. Um, I want to thank um, Trisha Lewis, who I don't think could be here today, um, for being the head of our RE committee. I want to thank um, Maggie for helping the youth uh, on their, the older youth went on a youth group trip to Japantown for the day and Maggie accompanied them. Kim and Cindy for their volunteering in the classroom and helping when we were absent and just teaching us about Ukraine and those sorts of things. And um, Norma Neal, are you here? Yeah, could you come up? Norma did an ex gave us an extraordinary amount of time taking uh, the class herself to become an owl trainer to teach our fourth through sixth grade owl this year. And hopefully we'll use her again in the future if she's willing. <laughs> so she went through a very intensive training and then also volunteered two Saturdays to help teach the kids. And this is for you. And we really appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you to everyone. In the future, we usually have more volunteers but because of COVID. We had a yeah. one class, but <laughs> so thank you so much. <laughs> Bye. And I want to say a huge thank you to Ginger, our Director of Religious Education, and to Brad in the classroom, thank you. To Mystica, who's in the back, doing her thing. I'll have more thank yous next week, but I really appreciate everything that they do for our children and youth. I also, I hope this is not distracting. I have a new toy. I'm going to try and preach from a screen and we'll see how it goes. Um, so again, I hope it's not too distracting. And I would like to say a big thank you to Paxton. You pretty much said everything I have to say. So <laughs> we could be done here, but I will emphasize a few points. Um, and I'll start with a song. I think it's always good to start a sermon or message with a song. So I have one for you, and it's actually the theme song of UU Chalice Camp. Has anybody here been to Chalice Camp? It's a program for children uh, and youth that was started by the Oakland UUs uh, 20 years ago, I think. And they, the organizers had a message that they wanted to give to the children, and they put it in this song, and it goes, it's a blessing you were born, and it matters what you do. What we know about God is a piece of the truth. Let the beauty we love be what we do, and we don't have to do it alone. Cha-cha-cha. <laughs> now, the cha-cha-cha is your part, okay? <laughs> I'm going to sing the song again, and when we get to the cha-cha-cha at the end, please chime in. Ready? It's a blessing we were born, and it matters what we do. What we know about God is a piece of the truth. Let the beauty we love be what we do, and we don't have to do it alone. Cha-cha-cha. <laughs> Very good. I'm going to return to that from time to time, and when I do, I hope you'll respond with the cha-cha-cha, even if all I do is say the last line. We don't have to do it alone. Cha-cha-cha. Good, good. So in just a moment, not quite yet, I'm going to ask you to greet someone next to you, preferably someone you don't know very well. And I would like you to find out their name and how long they've been a UU or how long they've been coming here. Estimates are okay. All right? So I'm going to give you just a minute to chat, and then I'll call you back together. All right? So take a look around, find someone that you can talk with and say hello to, and let's go.
shirt up? You found someone? There you go. Wow, that's nice. Good morning. That is nice. Yeah. Good morning. Hi, Hi Phyllis. Susan. Hi there. Um, I see we have some visitors or people I haven't seen in a while. Um, let's see who I saw. I saw Emily Schmidt's name and Janella and Kate Brady mm -hmm. and uh, Peggy. I don't think I've met you yet. Um, I don't know if you're a visitor or if you've been coming, but welcome. I'm a visitor and I used to attend the Unitarian Universalist uh, membership in Whittier, California when I was uh, late teens, early 20s. Well, welcome back. We're really happy uh, to have you with us this morning. Thank you. Yeah. Together, please. Find your seat. Find your seat, please. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Hi, Carol and Al. Our seats. Now I can see you. Or we might be here until 2.30 this I afternoon. <laughs> Let me try this again, folks. And we don't have to do it alone. Cha-cha-cha. There we go. All right, everyone back to your seats. Now let's try something here. On the count of three, I want you to say the name of the person you just met. All right? If you can't remember, you can I say your own name, I suppose, but hopefully you remember. Ready? One, two, three. Mary. Wonderful. That's great. Okay. Now, I want you to raise your hand if you met someone you didn't know. Good. That's good. If you met someone you didn't know. I love that. And did you meet someone who was much older than you? No judgment, no judgment. Okay, good, good. Did you meet someone who was much younger than you? All right, again, no judgment there, all right. Did you meet someone who was here for the first time? A couple of you, good, good. And how, who met someone who's been a member here or a UU for at least five years? A lot of you, good. How about 10 years? How about 20 years? All right, look at that. We've got some folks who have been around and uh, who have been around here for a long time. And remember that we're going to be honoring some of our longtime members next weekend at the next service. So there are a lot more questions we could ask, couldn't we, to get to know one another? We could ask about where we work or go to school or if we have pets, what we like to do for fun, all those things. And we would find a lot of diversity in our responses, right? Because we're all unique individuals and we have different backgrounds and experiences. And yet, I would venture to guess that we all have some things in common too. If we're all here today, one of those things is that we try to live by our UU principles, right? Principles like each person is important and be kind in all you do. And all people need a voice. And we want to work for a fair and peaceful world. And we're free to learn together about our world and about the divine, whether we call it God or love or human goodness. And we even make a promise, a covenant to each other about how we will be together. And you heard it a few minutes ago before the offertory, but I'll read it to you again. Love is the spirit of this church and service its law. This is our great covenant to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love and to help one another. To dwell together in peace to seek the truth in love and to help one another. You know, when I think about this covenant, I actually think about, you know, and, and how the congregation works together. I think about my family. I have a big family. My grandfather had eight brothers and sisters. 
and most of them had children, and their children had children, so by the time I came along, I had a lot of relatives. And I didn't know a lot of them very well, but every year or two, we would get together for a big party, a family reunion. And there would be the elders, you know, my grandparents there, and all of their siblings, and, and their, some of their cousins. And there'd be my dad's generation, and all of the parents. And then there'd be us kids. And we would be really shy at first. We wouldn't know each other all that well. But pretty soon, we were just running off together, playing hide-and-go-seek and spies. We love to play spies for some reason, and, um, and board games. And then on the way home, I would have to ask my parents to help me sort out who was who. And I'd say, who is that tall boy that I played checkers with? And they'd say, oh, that was your cousin Eric. He's Carol's son. Carol helped you find your coat. So we didn't know who we were playing with or who helped us, but it didn't matter, right? Because we were all family. And when I grew up, of course, I got to know everybody's name, and I got to introduce my, my own kids to this group, which is pretty great. Now, your family may be very different than mine. I feel really lucky to have this big, loving, cooperative family, but some of you may not know your cousins, and you may not have cousins at all, and that's okay. It's just different. And some of you may not get along with your family the way I do with mine, and you may not be close, and you may even have some painful family memories, and I just want to acknowledge that. But I also want to acknowledge and even celebrate the idea that this congregation is like a family too, and that we can make it together a loving, cooperative family. Together we can learn and grow and do our best to live the UU principles together, because we don't have to do it alone. <laughs> there you go, there you go. <laughs> we are all family here. So if we think of this congregation as a family, then the covenant is like our family rules. We agree to live in peace and seek truth in love and help one another. But how do we put this into practice in our UU family? We can try every day to treat each other, everyone we meet here, with kindness and respect. We can work out our disagreements, because we will have them, and we can apologize if we hurt each other. We can offer hospitality to everybody, everybody who wants to live these UU principles with us. No matter what age or size or race or ethnicity or gender or ability, we get to know and appreciate each other. We make everyone not just feel welcome, but make everyone feel like they belong. And we agree to be partners together in making the world a better place. Friends, I know that if we get used to living this way together, that we can then take this practice into other parts of our lives. And we can find friends and family everywhere, that it ripples out by our actions and the way that we approach everybody in the world. It's not easy to live these principles in today's world, is it? But fortunately, we don't have to do it alone. <laughs> there you go. To the children and the youth in our midst, you are an important part of this congregation. You belong here. And we are so happy you're here. I hope you will always find friends and companions here and the help that you need to follow your dreams. And again, to Ginger, our director of religious education, and to Brad, our classroom teacher, to Mystica, our child care provider, and to all those who have worked with our children and youth this year, thank you for all you do to nurture the spiritual development of our young people. You create a space that helps them explore and develop their own sense of truth and meaning and justice. 
and to the adults here today, let us renew our pledge to support this effort. Even more important, let us learn from our children and youth like Paxton. Let us learn because they offer us fresh ways of thinking and challenge us to grow. We are all family here. In closing, let me repeat the message of love and belonging for every one of you. It's a blessing you were born. And it matters what you do. What you know about God is a piece of the truth. Let the beauty you love be what you do. And remember, you don't have to do it alone. Cha-cha-cha. Yeah.